now that we've done some of the basics, um, we can start doing some calculations. And this is one of the most powerful things about Spartan that helps us gain insight into how this molecule behaves. So if we go to setup at the top, it's right next to build on the menu, um, we can go to calculations, okay? And this calculations window gives us a lot of options. And right now we're just going to focus on some of the, the easy ones, okay? So your options, your first option here is what exactly do you want me to calculate? Uh, do you want to calculate the energies for this molecule? Do you want to calculate the geometry for this molecule? Transition state geometry we'll talk about when we get to kinetics, but it's, it's in the middle of a reaction, basically. You're changing the geometry, you're breaking bonds, you're making bonds. What does that transition state look like? Maybe you have two conform conformers for equilibrium, or you want to do an energy profile. We'll be working with this option when we do kinetics, but right now you can stick with either energy or equilib equilibrium geometry. At the very moment, since equilibrium geometry is the default, we'll just stay there. You have options to put this molecule in the gas phase, so it's basically by itself, to put this molecule in a nonpolar solvent, a polar solvent, and water. We're just going to stick with gas phase so we can just look at this one molecule. This option here is the level of theory. So how accurate, how precise, how um, detailed do you want this calculation to be? Up here at the top, these are basically empirical, Newtonian, okay, molecular modeling, force fields. Okay, these are based on traditional classical physics, okay, where these molecules are going to be modeled as balls on springs, and then you can do all the, the Newtonian motion uh, physics with them um, that way. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It actually makes the, the computation a lot easier and faster. So if you choose these levels of theory, it's gonna, the, the calculation will not take so long. Um, up here, especially Hartree-Fock and de density functional theory, you have um, quantum mechanical models. So you're, it's going to approach the um, the calculation from a quantum mechanics point of view. Uh, in the middle, Hartree-Fock, okay, these also have mixed methods and so sometimes there are some assumptions made with the with the computational method and so these two things are both that um, quantum mechanical approach but with different assumptions built in so that it makes it easier. Um, PM3 is what we call semi-empirical and so it does a little bit of um, classical physics and a little bit of quantum. Uh, we typically use that it's going to be the most accurate for the least amount of time. Um, so we choose PM3, and that actually gets rid of these other options so you don't have to worry about them. Uh, in my physical chemistry class, when I do quantum mechanics, we often use Hartree-Fock, and now here are different levels of assumptions, I guess, that you could go into. How, how much do you want to lump together and how long do you want to wait for your calculation to be done is really what that affects. So here we're going to choose PM3. Um, the only other thing you need to pay attention to really right now is the total charge. So if you have an ion, for example, um, in class the other day, some groups had the ammonium ion, NH4+. When they did their calculation in Spartan, they needed to change this to a cation, plus one cation, um, to account for all the, the charge and where the electrons were. Um, you don't need to worry about unpaired electrons. When we did molecular orbital theory last semester, um, this ended up being a problem for some of the simulations we wanted you to do in lab, and so we actually did that for you and gave you the data instead, so we didn't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, you also, if you were doing molecular orbital theory right now, you'd want to click on orbitals and energies so that you could actually see the energy levels for this molecule, the, the molecular orbitals. Um, and it, once you get into organic chemistry, this might be interesting to look at the IR spectrum. This will predict um, the IR spectrum and the vibrational frequencies for this molecule. I'll go into that in another session. But right now, I'm just going to hit submit. You'll see that it'll pop up and tell me, save it as something. It recognizes this molecule as methanol, so that's what it's naming it. Usually it'll just say Spartan 1 or something like that. You can tell it where to save that file. Hit save. It should tell you that the job has been submitted. 
and then it'll tell you when the job has been completed. There you go. Analysis completed successfully. If you get a notice that says it failed, then it might be because of the, the cation anion thing that you haven't accounted for the charge or there's some kind of, of weird thing about your structure. And so you should double check your structure and maybe rebuild it and start from the beginning. Now that you've done those calculations, there's a lot of a lot more things that you can see. If you go to display properties, you can see that here under display in the menu bar, but you can also go here. It's the same same icon there for that. OK, so I go to properties. Now you can see I have uh, an energy for this molecule and although this number in and of itself is not particularly accurate um, it can be used for qualitative analysis just to look at which uh, molecular form is more stable the more negative it is the more stable it is um, you've got the the highest occupied molecular orbital energy and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital energy and so those are um, some estimates from our molecular theory in, in, in Gen Chem 1. We have the dipole moment which we talked about in class. There's your molecular weight. Um, point group that's for symmetry things you don't really need to worry about and then you can click here on display dipole moment and that will show that will show you where the dipole moment is in the molecule. I will note that this is a dipole moment for the entire molecule and not just this OH bond. Okay, so when we talk about intermolecular forces, um, we need to be looking more at localized charge distributions rather than overall molecular, especially once your molecule starts to get really big. The overall molecule dipole doesn't necessarily tell you much or tell you as much as the localized differences in electronegativity. We can also, as we did in class, go to um, this button here for surfaces. And I believe under display, there's the same, the same option here is to look at surfaces. Um, nothing should be on this list typically, and nothing will be able to be added to this list until you've done calculations. But you could go here to add, and you can look at the molecular orbitals, the HOMO and the LUMO. You can look at density electrostatic potential map, um, or an ionization potential map, or there's a bunch of stuff you could do. Um, the thing that you'd be looking at the most here is electrostatic potential map, and we'll be looking at this a lot in class, especially when we get to acids and bases. If you, you can notice that when I click on here, this is the on off button. Do you want that surface to be on the molecule or do you want it to be off? Okay, so I'm going to click so make sure it's on. Now we can't see the molecule inside. And if I want to tell the surface to do something or to change some property of, of the surface, then I need to select the surface by double clicking on it. And that gives you this big arrow here that's going to point to the surface. Now I have these options down here to do this in dots, which I think is hard. It's harder for me to see the colors in the dots option. You can do a mesh, okay, which is a little easier to see colors. At least you can see red here and blue here. Um, my preference is usually transparent because it's, again, easier for me to see those colors. And on this molecule, you can see that the methyl group down here, the CH3 group, really has no um, electron density issues. There's no richness or, um, or deficiencies. Everything is sort of being shared equally. But when you look at the alcohol end, we have that strong electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen. And so the hydrogen is going to have a large partial positive charge, and the oxygen is going to have a large partial negative charge.